Rocketing through another review, this is the NECA Toys Crash Bandicoot Deluxe Figure with Jet Board. Crash Bandicoot is back. The eagerly anticipated action figure line from NECA features Crash Bandicoot as you know and love him. Your favorite marsupial has plenty of articulation for maximum wumps. But, just as importantly, he's outfitted with ball joint eyebrows to create a variety of crazy expressions. This version of Crash also includes his signature hot rod, Jet Board. Relive all your favorite Crash moments and get ready to put some oomph in your wump. And to get this review started, let's grab the Ultra Measuretron and put it right to the top of his head. <laughs> that is actually what I call this tape measure. And right there, from the feet to his shoes to the top of his hair, he is a figure that stands 6.8 inches in height. If centimeters is your thing, then don't worry, I will switch the Ultra Measuretron to centimeters, telling us that the figure stands 17.3 centimeters in height. For the figure's accessories, he comes included with his jet board. It looks really neat. Now, you'll probably be looking at it and thinking, wait a minute, there's something missing on the back of the board. You would be very astute. He does also come with this little back, the motor part for the jet board. It's a simple snap together fix, taking these two pegs, lining them up with these two peg holes, and snapping them together. That's all that's required. Why don't we bring the camera back a little bit so we can see the jet board. It's a pretty large board. If you look at it, even stacking it next to Crash, it's almost double his height. It is made up of a fiery fire engine red with some nice uh, airbrushed fire flames there on the ends, especially even on the sides here, which will have the little hovering areas of the board. I like the transitioning of the white into the yellow, and the panel lining does a great, great job of popping that fire against the coloring of the red there. The red carries its way into the back motor section of the thrusters. You can see that they've done a nice job of not scratching up, but certainly looking as if the motor has a little bit of wear to it, adding some much needed, much appreciated addi additional etchings there of silver paint riveted areas on the front and then you've got your belt your fan belt there the side of the engines and of course the back thrusters which get almost the same similar treatment to the front of the flames as you can see that they've airbrushed the darker areas the more recessed areas of the thrusters in almost a really nice warm yellow and then the outer areas are there in white I like that the board is finished all the way around the front or top and the bottom. The only thing I wish that the board could have come with, you can probably see where I'm going with this Richard, is I wish that the board had had a little support strut, a cradle if you will, a little clear stand in which you could have put this on top of and then you could have put a Crash Bandicoot on top of that. It loses a little bit of the pizzazz I suppose if you will if by just having it completely flat on wherever you're displaying your figures. Now, being an avid collector of various toy lines, I simply could find a clear stand, something which I could prop this on top of, but uh, it would have been really nice if NECA had included like a little clear stand, even something that could have pegged underneath that you could have then been able to almost ball joint a hinge and you could have been able to move the board back and forth. That would also have included a requirement of having probably pegs on the top so that Crash wasn't going to whoop slide right off of the board. But again, it's all stuff that I kind of wish that the board could have had. So it wasn't just I have it flat on a surface and I literally have Crash Bandicoot just sort of standing on top of it. Now, this is, I guess, technically the fourth figure, second to be released, but I think they're releasing another two figures, one with a jetpack and then one with the scuba gear. I think the only one that we had received prior to this 
was the standard release Crash Bandicoot. If you remember, I did the review of it. It came with a little cardboard box, a little cardboard crate there. The figures, if you look at them side by side, and this would be a perfect opportunity for me to bring in the figure. I'm not sure where I put my Crash Bandicoot. But I think like the body is pretty much identical, if not a reuse, from the original body that we got from the standard release. Uh, the shoes, as well as the shorts, are all, I think, carryovers, even as well the gloves. I think the only thing that has been changed out is the head portrait. The standard release had sort of a more closed mouth. You saw a little bit of bottom teeth and a tongue. I even think you saw a little bit of the top teeth, but the mouth was certainly a lot more closed than this. And his eye expression was a lot more subtle, I think. The posability in the eyebrows still carried over so really, again, I think it's just NECA has reused the same body, which I'm perfectly fine for. The very fact that we are discussing a new Crash Bandicoot figure is something pretty cool, I have to admit. And I'm glad that NECA is still showing love for, for a character that really hasn't made many of appearances as of late. So that is really, really neat. Uh, much like the standard release that we looked at before, the texturing on the fur here is really incredible. Again, you've got that nice airbrushing there of a darker, warmer orange and a lighter, almost creams creamsicle colored yellowish orange in the middle there. Amid amidst all that, you've got a little bit of additional brown that they've added. It kind of makes appearances here and there, a little bit there on the shoulders. Um, not really a much on the rest of his body, but again, like the fur is sculpted really nice here. Uh, again, as for his face, got the carryover there of the fur. You've got the nice peaked spiky hair there on the top, which I think, I think again has carried over from the original. I would have to find the original again and maybe I'll do a comparison of the two figures. I love the expression though on his face that it is different from the other one. And looking at what we've seen so far with the Jetpack Crash Bandicoot and the Scuba Gear Crash Bandicoot, I think all of their faces are going to be unique to one another. So it's simply not just we're getting another figure, and then we're getting a jet board with it. It's not the case here. But paint is really good here. I might have even mentioned when we looked at the initial standard release of Crash Bandicoot that this could very well be one of NECA's better sculpt figures. Right up there with like some of the Mogwai figures or the Gremlins that we've seen in previous, uh, previous years. So let's go through his posability. Now, as I had mentioned, he does have the still the ball jointed eyebrows that the original release had. So this gives you some options for how you want to display the figure, even just from an eyebrow standpoint. Did you ever think of there would be a day where we'd be talking about a figure that had eyebrow articulation? And yet we're here. We're in the future where hoverboards don't exist. Ugh. Anyways talking about Back to the Future until the cows come home. We never did get our hoverboards. Anyways, nice paint, by the way, in the eyebrows, adding some lighter areas of the brown, just kind of tipping the tips of the sculpt here while the more darker areas are kind of relegated to the under sculpting there. You can see just the lighter brown kind of just makes slight appearances there. Uh, but they do, like I said, move back and forth. They're all basically on a ball joint. Let me just show you how that works. There's the socket. There's the ball joint and just kind of plug that in place. So you kind of kind of have a little bit more of an angrier, determined, if you will, crazier maybe, crazy like a Crash Bandicoot, or you can have it a little bit more just calmer. Still kind of the expression on his, on his face would not dictate a calmer crash, but you see what I'm doing here. Uh, for the head, the head rotates back and forth. It is a little limited, I have to admit. It's certainly not a case like a standard human character in the sense that you could rotate the head all the way around. Here you're sort of just relegated to moving the head side to side. It doesn't really hinge up and down too, too much. I guess you could angle it up a little bit to about there. But I mean, really, what's he going to be looking at way up there? Especially if he's going to be riding that. You might want to make sure, Mr. Crash, that your eyes are looking forward and not up. Distracted driving. I don't care whether you're driving a car or you're hovering on a jet board, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, the shoulders hinge out, and you can also rotate them all the way around. You gotta have to get them around his ears. Make sure you don't clip those ears. It does also have a hinge in the elbow. You can rotate the forearm. You can rotate also the hands, which also hinge back and forth. Just wanna quickly mention it before I forget, 
I am getting old after all, so forgetting things comes quite easily. His fingers are very soft plastic. There, I said it. Moving on. He does also have an upper torso ball joint. Um, he does not have a lower waist swivel, but I mean really a lot of what you're being able to get anyways is coming from the ball joint in the torso. It's not as if he really necessarily needs anything here. The legs move forward and back. You can also hinge them outward. He very awkwardly, and I may have even mentioned this with the previous figure, he's got knee articulation in the sense that you can rotate the knee. At times it looks like you can hinge the knee back and forth, but I find like this leg is really stiff, but there is a hinge joint right there, just in case you were gonna call me a fibber face. Please don't call me a fibber face. You can see he does move the legs back and forth, and he does also have a ball joint, if you could believe it. I kid you not, there's a ball joint actually inside, inside his feet. You see right there, you can hinge him back and forth, and you can rotate the feet, you can also hinge him back and kind of angled back and forth. Um, sometimes I do find that the crash doesn't sit completely flat. If you do have this problem, just kind of double check that your ball joints are completely broken in. Not literally breaking them, but make sure that you've just sort of loosened them up. Once you get them loose, uh, you do get the much more flexible crash bandicoot as a result of it. And uh, he is actually a pretty poseable figure, though I might have thought at the time that I looked at the guy first go around that he was limited on posability, but he actually isn't. You also saw it too, I know, you're looking at it right there. Peg holes on the undersides of his feet, but really, like, the board itself doesn't have pegs. If it did, well, we could also consider the means of having a peg on the underside of the board where you could have actually had something on a like a neck or something where you could have adjusted it back and forth. It's about the only thing I wish that this setup could have afforded the means to actually display the board so it's not just sitting flat on a shelf. Dear NECA Toys, thank you for providing us with yet another example of a cool Crash Bandicoot, this one coming with a very radical jet board. Yes, I said radical. Yes, also in this letter, I put in brackets, yes, I know, I said radical. Um, thank you also in advance for providing us with the Jetpack version of Crash Bandicoot and one with scuba gear. I am super excited what we're going to be getting with future Crash Bandicoot figures, sexily yours, this reviewer. Joking aside though, I'm thrilled that we're getting more Crash Bandicoot releases from NECA Toys, this one having a unique head sculpt, which is, which is one thing I really do like. It's not the exact same head sculpt as what we got with the standard release, so it's all the more reason that if you already had the other one, you're not just picking up the same figure with a jet board, radical or not, you're getting one with at least a unique head portrait, so I like that a lot. The head sculpt, as well as the rest of the body of Crash Bandicoot, is perfect. Looks like he was pulled from the game. The texturing that you've done to the fur, I guess I'm still writing this letter, the texturing that you have added to this fur does make it look like he's a nice textured figure, and it's that airbrushing that has been also added that really makes those details pop. Unfortunately, the only thing I wish this figure could have had, and if you are reading this letter and have just watched this video, you probably know where I'm going to go with this, I wish he could have come with a clear display stand. Yes, I know, I'm beating a dead horse. Yes, I know, I also don't like using the term beating a dead horse, which I also put in brackets in this letter. I wish that he could have at least come with a clear display stand, not for the figure necessarily, but just something that you could have propped the jet board up onto so it looked like Crash was actually hovering with it. But that's something I could easily find in my tickle trunk of other collectible accessories. But I kind of wish that the figure could have come with it. Sexily yours, this reviewer. Today we were having a look at the new Crash Bandicoot. This was the deluxe figure with Jet Board. Which, by the way, if you're interested in picking this one up for yourself, should be available now in comic book stores and retail stores alike. If you've managed to pick up this one for yourself... Let me know down below in the comments section what you think of the figure. Do you feel he should have had a clear stand, something underneath the board, just so you can elevate it off of whatever surface that you're displaying with the figure? Let me know down below. We're going to chew and digest your comments, which I normally like to do. If you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. Certainly more videos, certainly more NECA goodies will be coming your way. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.